Hi guys, it's Jeannie here. I want to go ahead and do this quick video. I just uploaded several videos, guys. I'm able to upload a lot faster now, so hopefully you guys are enjoying these videos because I sure am enjoying um, making them. And um, I think I've been feeling the spirit pretty strong today. <laughs> uh, I've been crying, and I don't think this... Um, I don't think it's gonna stop anytime soon so I'm sorry I'm warning you as of right now but <laughs> sometimes it just needs to express itself you know the spirit sometimes is pretty strong and so it's got to roll with it so here we go um, I want to go ahead and, and read this one to you it's called reverence for God for God is the beginning of wisdom so let's go ahead and start it's by Elder Neil Anderson, and then it says here, The wisdom of the world is most valuable when it humbly bows to the wisdom of God. We live in a world of information overload. Perhaps symbolic of this world is the amazing Wikipedia, the world's largest online encyclopedia. To give its scope, as of 2012, it had over 2.5 billion words in English alone and more than 22 million articles across some 284 languages. There are more than 70 language versions of Wikipedia that have, a, have at least 10,000 articles each. There are more than 4 million articles in the English version. Our information overload is evidenced as well in the explosive use of social networking sites such as Facebook, founded in 2004 and topping 1 billion active users worldwide in 2012. Or YouTube, launched in 2005 where some videos clips have reportedly been, re been viewed more than 100 million times. In this information tidal wave, how desperately we need wisdom. Wisdom to sort through and discern how to apply what we are learning. Um, T.S. Eliot is be believing Christian writing years ago speaks to our world today. O oh, world of spring and autumn, birth and dying, the endless cycle of idea and action, endless invention, endless experiment, bring knowledge of motion but not of stillness, knowledge of speech but not of silence, knowledge of words and ignorance of the word. All our knowledge brings us nearer to our ignorance. All our ignorance brings us nearer to death, but nearness to death no nearer to God. Where is the life we have lost in living? Where is the wisdom we have lost in knowledge? Where is the knowledge we have lost in information? The cycles of heaven in 20 centuries bring us farther from God and nearer to the dust. Where are you on the wisdom scale? Some might re relate to the young lady excited about her upcoming marriage who who exclaimed to her parents, oh, I'm getting married. I'm at the end of all my troubles. And her mother whispered to her father, yes, but she doesn't know at which end. The more I learn about the wisdom of God, the more I believe I am only at the beginning end of wisdom, beginning end of wisdom. It humbles me as I realize how much I have to learn. Today, I hope to increase our desire to acquire wisdom and specific, specifically the wisdom of God. The blessing, hold on guys, let me adjust this light because it's a little, it's kind of hurting my eyes so okay sorry about that <laughs> um, the blessing of wisdom I want to emphasize several principles of wisdom first in our age of information and knowledge we must seek after wisdom wisdom is multi multi-dimensional and comes in different sizes and colors wisdom gained early brings enormous blessings wisdom in one area may not be transferable to another and finally the wisdom of the world while in many cases very valuable is most valuable when it humbly bows to the wisdom of God the scriptures describe two types of wisdom 
the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. The wisdom of the world has both a positive and a negative component in the darkest description. It could be described as a partial truth mixed with intelligence and manipulation to achieve selfish or evil purposes. An example from the Book of Mormon in the man um, Amlisi or no, I don't think it's a Malachi. Is it a Malachi? <laughs> the scriptures say that a certain man being called I'm not sure if it's a Malachi Am Amlisi or Amlichi. I'm not sure. He being very cunning man, yea, a wise man as to the wisdom of the world, drew away much people after him. The scriptures go on to describe Amlisi as a wicked man whose intent was to destroy the church of God. In Alma chapter 2 verses 1 through 2 and 4. Um, it says, we are not interested in this kind. I mean, you can, you can reference that if you need to. We are not interested in this kind of wisdom. There is another kind of wisdom of the world that is not nearly so sinister. In fact, it is very positive. The wisdom is consciously acquired through study, reflection, observation, and hard work. It is very valuable and helpful in the things we do. To good and decent people, it comes as we experience our mortality. You will remember American author Mark Twain's comment when I was a boy of 14 my father was and was so ignorant I could hardly stand to have the old man around but when I got to be 21 I was astonished at how much he had learned in seven years if we are observant if we are thoughtful time can teach us much I remember at the time of my graduation from college, I traveled for Brigham Young University to Preston, Idaho, um, where my grandmother, Mary Keller, lived. She was then 78 years old and frail. She passed away two years later. She was a marvelous lady, and I knew that if I would listen and learn from her experiences, I could learn wisdom that would help me along the way. We can whole vault over many of the sad experiences that come to some in life by obtaining wisdom early, wisdom beyond our age. Seek after this wisdom, be reflective, observe carefully, think about what you experience in life. We can also learn wisdom in our specific professional and personal pursuits. Let me give you two examples. <clears throat> Sorry guys, I have to, you know the drill. <laughs> I have to focus on something else for a little bit so that my eyesight can help me, especially because I've been tearing up a little bit. So, okay, Dr. Devon C. Hale is a physician in Salt Lake City who grew up in Idaho Falls, Idaho. I have marveled at his knowledge and his wisdom as it concerns tropical diseases. It is not just Dr. Hale's knowledge, but also has understanding of how to apply that knowledge. Sorting through several layers and judging one against the other, it is a blessing to have that kind of medical wisdom for missionaries across the world. A second example, when our oldest son um, began elementary school in our home in Tampa, Florida, we were anxious to meet his kindergarten teacher Miss Judith Graybell. She was a woman in her 50s and had an amazing ability with young children. She knew just how to motivate them, when to praise them, and when to be firm with them. She had the knowledge to teach them, but she had much more. We worked hard to get each of our children into her kindergarten classroom. These two people demonstrate selective wisdom in the world. Their wisdom is a help to many and allows them to be successful in their professions. However, we should realize the limitations of this wisdom. The wisdom in one area may not necessarily carry into wisdom in another. For example, I may not want Ms. Graybell diagnosing tropical diseases, and I may not want Dr. Hale teaching my children's 
my child's kindergarten class. <laughs> More important, the wisdom that brings success in the world must be willing to step behind the wisdom of God and not think that it can substitute for it. Remember, all wisdom is not created equal. <clears throat> The psalmist said, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Psalm um, chapter 111, verse 10. What the scripture means is that a profound reverence for the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. The profound reverence comes because our Heavenly Father has all wisdom and all power, both in heaven and in earth. Mosiah chapter 4, verse 9. The wisdom is perfect. It is pure and it is unselfish. This wisdom at times will op will be opposite the wisdom of the world, meaning the wisdom of God and the wisdom of the world will come in direct conflict one with another. Remember the words of the Lord in Isaiah, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Isaiah chapter 55 verses 8 through 9. The wisdom of God will not come to us by entitlement. We must be willing to seek after it. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Then give it that giveth to all men liberally. Um, this is a little bit longer, guys, just so you know. Um, here goes. And abradeth not, and it shall be given him. James chapter 1, verse 5. The wisdom of God is a, a, is a spiritual gift. Seek not for riches, but for wisdom. And behold, the mysteries of God shall be unfolded unto you, and then shall you be made rich. Doctrine and covenants... Um, chapter 6, verses 7. S um, seeking for the wisdom of God is always accompanied by obedience to the commandments. Generally, the spiritual gift of wisdom comes step by step as we honestly and diligently seek it. I will give unto the children of men line upon line, precept upon precept, and I bless, and blessed are those who hearken unto my precept. For they shall learn wisdom. For unto him that receiveth, I will give more. Second Nephi chapter 28 verse 30. Joseph Smith said this, The things of God are of deep import, and time and experience and careful and ponderous and solemn thoughts can only find them out. There is no instant gratification and seeking for the wisdom of God. Finally, the source of the wisdom of God is different from that of the world. The wisdom of God is found in the scriptures and the re in the teachings of the prophets, such as during um, general conference. And of course, in my prayer, in my prayers, see Doctrine and Covenants chapter eight, verses one through two. And always, always this wisdom distills upon us with the power of the Holy Ghost the Apostle Paul said for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of God knoweth no man but the Spirit of God <coughs> Which things also we speak not in the words which man, man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verses 11 and 13. With the wisdom of God, we see beyond our current circumstances because, as the scripture says, the Spirit speaketh of things as they really are and of things as they really will be. Jacob chapter 4 verses, uh, verse 13. The wisdom of God is wisdom worthy of our devoted attention. 
So the first one we're going to talk about is wisdom of tithing. And if you guys don't know what tithing is, um, if you're not if you're not an LDS member, or I mean, I, I think almost everybody should know what tithing is. <laughs> if you've read the Bible, um, you would know what tithing is. And you can also look it up. But tithing is basically um, you pay a tenth of whatever money you've earned. So if you work and like let's say you make a thousand five hundred dollars before taxes and then that's you end up paying a tenth of that so yeah that is what tithing is and what i have learned is about tithing is that you have to give it and have faith that the lord will take care of all of your necessities and know that it is that money is for building his kingdom, for building um, his churches, his um, temples. Um, it also helps for many things. It helps for books and uh, magazines that we're reading right now. It helps with for, for many different things, for spreading the Lord's message, his gospel. So that's what tithing is for. Perhaps the most important point is that not all wisdom is created equal. We need to learn that when there is a conflict between the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God, we must yield our will to the wisdom of God. We are the sons and daughters of God. We are spiritual beings on a mortal mission. We who are devoted to learning the wisdom of the, of the world and the wisdom of God must not become confused with which wisdom is more important. Let me share an experience from a noble Latter-day Saint in Sao Paulo, Brazil. She tells of her struggle between paying her tithing or her tuition. Here are her words. The university prohibited the students that were in debt or who had not paid their tuition from taking tests. I remember a time when I faced serious financial difficulties. It was a Thursday. When I received my salary, when I figured the monthly budget, I noticed that there wouldn't be enough to pay both my tithing and my university. I would have to choose between them. The bi-monthly tests would start the following week, and if I didn't take them, I could lose the school year. I felt great agony. My heart ached. Here was a direct conflict between the wisdom of the world and the wisdom of God. Even though you are very good and righteous, you will find in your life, if you are truthful with yourself, that your heart will ache as you feel some of these conflicts coming up before you. I return to her story. First, she paid her tithing on Sunday. The following Monday, she recounted what happened. The working period was ending uh, when my employer approached and gave the last orders of the day. Suddenly, he halted and asked, How is your college? She described him as a harsh man, and all she could say was, Everything is all right. He then left. Suddenly, the secretary entered the room. She said, The employer has just said that from today on, the company is going to pay fully for your college and your books. Before you leave, stop at my desk and inform me if the costs so that tomorrow I can give you the check. If you are per perceptive, you will find that you are confronted with these types of tests many times throughout your life. Where will you put your trust? Listen to the Lord's warning directly to us. Oh, the vainness and the um, frailties and the foolishness of men when they are learned in the wisdom of the world they think they are wise and they hearken not unto the counsel of God for they are for they set it aside supporting I mean supposing they know of themselves the wisdom of the world wherefore their wisdom is foolishness and it um, profiteth them not and they shall perish but to be learned in the wisdom of the world is good if they hearken unto the counsels of God. Chapter 2, um, sorry. Um, 2 Nephi chapter 9, verses 28 through 29. 
Now from Paul, where is the wise? Hath not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 20. Let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seemeth to be wise in this world, let him become a fool, that he may be wise. For the, for the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 18 through 19. The test is often whether we will allow the wisdom of God to be our guiding course when it moves opposite the wisdom of the world. Mm. Okay, this little part right here, it shows a person trying to pay tithing. Um, Usually that's how we, we pay it at church. We have the little yellow slips. It says here, think of the wisdom of God on personal finances. We put money in its proper role by paying an honest tithe and being generous in our offerings. Um, okay guys, so we're almost done. And we're at 21 minutes and I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm trying to read as fast as I can. Um, Ammon lamented, for they will not seek wisdom, the wisdom of God. Neither do they desire that they should rule over them. Mosiah chapter 8, verse 20. When thinking of those who have been willing to let the wisdom of God rule over them, I think of a friend of mine from mainland China, um, Sai Ying. Um, who made significant sacrifices to join the church and served a mission in, in New York. I think of my two daughters, both very intelligent with master degrees, but who have chosen the blessings of motherhood and children. I think of a friend from South America who left his lucrative employment when he learned taxes were being illegally evaded. All have put the wisdom of God above the wisdom of the world. Sadly, the wisdom of the world can deceive capable people. Joseph Smith said in this way, There are a great many wise men and women too in our midst who are too wise to be taught. Therefore, they must die in their ignorance. And in the resurrection, they will find their mistake. Sorry, guys. My eyes. <laughs> Wisdom and finances. With the difficulties in our economy, let me raise the issue of personal finances in our current condition. We are all more humble and teachable, but think back on the last few years. The world teaches that if we want something, we, we should have it. We should not have to wait for it. Debt can allow us to have it now. The debt can come through credit cards, or it might come through overextending the leverage on a house that we own. We can leverage what we have, even our education. Values will always go up, and we will, we will prosper. prosper. The wisdom of the world is that the amount of the monthly payment becomes more important than the size of the loan. Our obligations are somewhat dis, um, discretionary, discretionary, and if all fails, bankruptcy is our last option. Now let's think of the wisdom of God on personal finances constantly taught by the prophets. The foundation is self-reliance and work. We put money in its proper role by paying an honest tithe and being generous in our offerings. We live on less than we earn, and we differentiate between our needs and our wants. We avoid debt except for the most fundamental of needs. We live within a budget. We put away some savings. We are honest in all our obligations. About 14 years ago, President Gordon B. Hinckley warned, I am suggesting that the time has come to get our houses in order. So many of our people are living on the very edge of their incomes. In fact, some are living on borrowings. There is a 
portent of stormy weather ahead to which we had better give heed. Several years ago, at the peak of our prosperity, President Thomas S. Monson said, My brothers and sisters, avoid the philosophy that yesterday's luxuries have become today's necessities. They aren't necessities unless we make them so. Many enter into long-term debt only to find that changes occur. People become ill or incapacitated. Companies fall or downsize. Jobs are lost. Natural disasters befall us. For many reasons, payments on large amounts of debt can no longer be made. Our debt becomes as a... As a um, As a sword, I'm sorry guys, my eyes, <laughs> ah, sword hanging over our heads and threatening to destroy us. I urge you to live within your means. One cannot spend more than one earns and remain solvent. I promise you that you will then be happier than you would be if you were constantly worrying about how to make the next payment on non-essential debt. Can you see how the wisdom of God can conflict with the wisdom of the world? The choice was not so obvious when all looked. Prosperous, um, many members of the church wish they had listened more closely. This is the wisdom of God. I suggest you take some of the issues facing you. Put a line down the middle of a piece of paper List the wisdom of the world on the left side and the wisdom of God on the right side. Write the issues in conflict one with another. What choices are you making in section 45 of the Doctrine and Covenants, which speaks of the events leading up to the second coming of the Savior? The Lord again tells the story of the ten virgins and then leaves us with these words. For they that are wise and have received the truth and have taken the Holy Spirit for their guide and have not been deceived, verily I say unto you, they shall not be hewn down and cast into the fire, but shall abide the day. Doctrine and Covenants, chapter 45, 50, um, verse 57. Let us seek after the wisdom of God. We are currently in difficult economic times across the world, and it brings some concern as we plan for jobs, um, careers, and income. But there are many good and prosperous days ahead. There is much we need, I mean, we can learn right now about wisdom. I promise you that the Lord's blessings will attend you as you seek for wisdom, the wisdom of God. And then it says here, take some of the issues facing you. Put a line down the middle of the piece of paper. List the wisdom of the world on the left side and the wisdom of God on the right side. Write issues in conflict with another. And it just shows a person doing that. Okay, guys. So this is already 28 minutes long. I am so sorry it took so long, but um, this was longer to read. So as I was reading this, I was thinking about... Um, my experience with this before I had children um, it was so easy to pay tithing because I was single I was working and I didn't have so much debt and so it was just so easy for me to pay it was just like the first thing I would pay and I wouldn't think about it and I just knew I, I, it was it was like a no-brainer for me it's something I always did I never even thought about it. I just did it and that was it. Tithing was just something I always did. And as soon as I started having kids, it became a little bit harder. Um, it becomes harder because... It becomes harder because um, you, you put your children before anything else, you know? But there are so many things that, that you are not taught. I mean, as a first-time mother... Um, I didn't know anything about couponing. I didn't know anything about how to save money or anything like that. I mean, I wasn't, I wasn't really taught any of those things, so I didn't know. But and also, you know, um, sometimes you you forget to put the Lord 
before anything else because you feel like you have to have food on the table you know you have to have you have to have clothes you have to have diapers you have to have wipes you have to have essentials for the home and and sometimes you forget that the lord will provide everything you need and that's something that you know i constantly have to remind myself of it now that i have my children and and, and, it, and it's hard. Um, sometimes I still struggle with it. I've, I've tried to do better. And I, and I make it very clear um, to my husband. Because I know he's a he was a convert a long time ago. and Like before we got married. He, he converted into the church and stuff. And I know that my example um, shows a lot to him. And and since I'm the one that takes care of the finances. He, he works. And I mean I work from home. And I try to you know, do as much as I can. I try to provide as much as I can. Just, I mean, he works, he's full time. Um, but I try to provide as much as I can too. And, um, I, I'm the one that sees the finances. So I feel mo most of the burden. I'm the one that usually feels, you know, he can sleep good at night. <laughs> I mean, he goes to work and everything, you know, he's tired sometimes and doesn't want to go to work, but I mean, for the most part, he can sleep at night. I'm the one thinking, I owe this person, I owe this person, I owe this person, I owe this person. And I honestly want to have peace of mind already, you know? I know at one point in time, I didn't have any credit cards. I didn't have any, I didn't have as much debt as I did, as I do now. Um, and then I totally agree. Sometimes illnesses happen. Like my husband, when he was in the hospital, you know, he, he had, he couldn't go to work for about almost two weeks. And we depend on that, on that paycheck, you know? Um, we had to borrow from the bank in order for us to be able to keep going. Um, you know, uh, with my, when my dad hit the hospital too, I mean, I had to borrow from the bank too in order to be able to, you know, get, have gas and be able to, you know, go in and be there with my dad, make sure he's fine and everything. So a lot of the times the tithings would, were not being paid and, and, and it was it was very very difficult sometimes they were and sometimes they weren't and for the most part you know um, we need to remember that you know the Lord will provide I myself need to remind myself of that and and even though I might have my children or I might have things that happen I know that the Lord always knows what's best I have been guys like on my last dollar and I'm not joking, one way or another, the Lord allows me to sell something or, you know, um, my husband ends up selling an art piece or something and we make the money that, that is needed. And, you know, sometimes we want more, you know, the Lord provides what we need, you know, and I've always wondered, like, how come you can't give me more? <laughs> why, why, do we, why does it always have to be just what we need? But honestly, guys peace of mind comes from just what we need we I mean I think that sometimes we're not even happy with him giving us more I'd rather um I I, I would love to do a lot of other things you know I, I see a lot of people posting things that they go here and they go there and you know um sometimes I wish like we, we, we could travel and we could just do all these things and you know not just be pain and pain and pain but I know that comes from lack of responsibility and, and, and we need to get out of debt and we need to pay the people that we owe and maybe that time will come for us. But for now, I mean, we do need to work on on having a savings account and stuff because we never know what the future holds. You know, we never know um, what could happen. And so, and we, and we need to learn to, to put our trust in the Lord more than anything, you know. And the Lord will provide. And so I want to go ahead and leave you with this. And hopefully this helped you in some way. I know it helped me in some way. And um, hopefully it helped you some way. And thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you came this far with me. Because I'm already going to hit 35 minutes. Sorry for making these videos super long. But I do want to share some of my experiences um, after I read these. Because I think it's really important. I mean, I haven't seen many of these videos. Maybe there is some out there. But... I do like sharing these. Um, maybe it'll help somebody out there. And thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed, definitely subscribe. And um, let me know what you guys thought about this. And I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye, guys.